Scientists built the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope to see in infrared and it can look further into space and thus further back in time than anything previously constructed. Webb will look back more than 13.5 billion years in time to see the faint infrared light from the first galaxies revealing a previously unseen era of cosmic history that shaped the universe of today. It's a cosmic time machine capable of seeing galaxies and stars as they were as few as 100 million years after the Big Bang, the unimaginably violent genesis of the universe. However, Webb just shows the first minutes after the dinosaurs disappeared which almost changed how scientists looked at the past and mystery of the extinction of dinosaurs. So join me as I show you insights into how James Webb Telescope reveals what happened in the first minutes after the dinosaurs disappeared and how it affects universe and humankind as a whole. Webb can be a time machine. Looking out in space is like looking back in time. It sounds magical, but it's actually very simple. Light needs time to travel across the vast distances of space to reach us. Light waves move extremely fast, about 186 miles, 300,000 km per second, every second. Light moves so fast that as we go about our daily lives, it appears to travel instantaneously from one place to another. For example, it takes only a few billionths of a second for light to travel across a room once a lamp is switched on. In space, however, the distances are so immense that the time light takes to travel is noticeable. The Moon is the Earth's closest companion. At about 239,000 miles, 390,000 kilometers away, light takes around 1.3 seconds to travel the distance to Earth. When we look up at the sky, we see the Moon as it was 1.3 seconds earlier. Similarly, the light from the planet Neptune takes about four hours to cross the solar system. So we say Neptune is four light hours away. Across our Milky Way galaxy, distances are measured in terms of how many years it takes light to travel. The nearest star is over four light years away. So when we look at that nearest star, we see it not as it was today, but as it was four years ago. We are seeing the light that left the star four years previously and is just reaching us now. Galaxies are yet further away in both space and time. Our nearest large neighbor galaxy, Andromeda, is about 2.5 million light years away. The Virgo cluster of galaxies is the largest nearby collection of galaxies at about 60 million light years away from the Milky Way. The light we see today from galaxies in the Virgo cluster started on its path toward us at the same time as the age of dinosaurs was ending on Earth. If you were in a Virgo cluster galaxy today, and you had a telescope powerful enough to study the Earth, you would be able to see the prehistoric reptiles. Here's what happened the day the dinosaurs died. An impact calculator in James Webb helps scientists paint a vivid picture of the immediate aftermath of the deadly asteroid strike. Imagine sunrise on the last day of the Mesozoic era, 66 million years ago. Shafts of sunlight rake through the swamps and coniferous forests along the coast of what is now Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. The blood-warm seas of the Gulf of Mexico teem with life. As this lost world of dinosaurs and outsized insects squawks and buzzes and whirs to life, an asteroid the size of a mountain is hurtling towards Earth at about 40,000 miles or 64,000 kilometers an hour. For a few fleeting moments, a fireball that appears far bigger and brighter than the sun streaks through the sky. An instant later, the asteroid slams into the Earth with an explosive yield estimated at over 100 trillion tons of TNT. The impact penetrates Earth's crust to a depth of several miles, gouging a crater more than 115 miles 185 kilometers, across and vaporizing thousands of cubic miles of rock. The event sets off a chain of global catastrophes that wipe out 80% of life on Earth, including most of the dinosaurs. This apocalyptic tale has been described in countless books and magazines ever since the asteroid impact theory was first put forth in 1980. The identification of Chicxulub Crater in the Gulf of Mexico during the 1990s then gave scientists an accurate idea of when and the where. But exactly how the fallout killed off so much life on Earth has remained a tantalizing mystery. Last month, a team of British scientists working on an offshore drilling platform in the Gulf of Mexico obtained the first-ever core samples from the peak ring 
of the Chicxulub crater. This ring is where the shocked Earth rebounded in seconds following the impact and the swelling formed a large circular structure within the crater walls. By studying its topsy-turvy geology, researchers hope to gain a better understanding of the phenomenal forces unleashed that day. What is already known would beggar the imagination of Hollywood scriptwriters. Using an impact calculator developed by a team of geophysicists from Purdue University and Imperial College London, users can enter a few key details such as the asteroid's size and speed to paint a vivid picture of events. You can plug in different distances from the point of impact to see how the effects change over distance, says Joanna Morgan, one of the lead scientists on the Chicxulub drilling project. If you were close, say within 1,000 meters or 625 miles, you would be instantaneously or within a few seconds killed by the fireball. Indeed, if you were near enough to see it, you were dead, says Gareth Collins, a lecturer on planetary science at Imperial College who helped develop the program. Nine seconds after impact, an observer at that distance would have been roasted by a blast of thermal radiation. Trees, grass, and shrubs would have been spontaneously burst into flame, and anyone present would have suffered instant third-degree burns over their entire bodies. After the fire comes the flood. Depending on the local topography, the impact would have kicked up a phenomenal tsunami up to 1,000 feet, 305 meters high. And, at the low-end estimate of 10.1 on the Richter scale, the subsequent earthquake would have been more powerful than anything ever measured or experienced by humans. At just over 8 minutes post-impact, ejecta would start to spill down, smothering the burning landscapes beneath a blanket of hot grit and ash. Closer to the impact zone, the ground would be buried beneath hundreds, even thousands of feet of rubble. About 45 minutes later, a blast of wind would tear through the region at 600 miles 965 kilometers per hour, scattering debris and leveling anything that might still be standing. The sound of the explosion would arrive at the same time, a 105 decibel roar as deafening as a jet making a low-pass flyover. Further afield out of range of the direct effects of the explosion, an observer would be treated to the spectacle of darkening skies and an apocalyptic display of shooting stars created by the impact debris raining back on Earth. They wouldn't have looked quite like regular shooting stars or meteors, said Collins. Meteors burn at higher speeds and get hotter. These would have been re-entering the atmosphere at lower altitudes, traveling slower and emitting infrared radiation. I'm not entirely sure what that would look like. Some sort of red glow would be my guess. After the red glow, the sky would darken as ash and debris swirling around the globe created a creepy twilight. For the first few hours, there would have been close to total darkness, says Collins, but soon after that, the sky would begin to lighten. The following weeks, months, perhaps even years, were probably somewhere between twilight and very cloudy day. While most accounts focus on the spectacular violence of those first few minutes to days after the impact, it was the long-term environmental effects that ultimately wiped out most of the dinosaurs and much of the rest of life on Earth. The prevailing dimness caused by the dust cloud meant photosynthesis would have been dramatically reduced. The soot and ash would have taken months to wash out of the atmosphere, and when it did, the rain would have fallen as acidic mud. Massive fires would have produced huge amounts of toxins that temporarily destroyed the planet's protective ozone layer. Then, there was the carbon footprint of the impact itself, which released an estimated 10 billion tons of carbon dioxide, 100 billion tons of carbon monoxide, and another 100 billion tons of methane in one fell swoop, according to geologist David Kring of the Lunar and Planetary Institute. In effect, the aftermath of the asteroid was probably a powerful one-two punch of nuclear winter, followed by dramatic global warming. And that's where the core samples freshly pulled from Chicxulub Club Crater can help fill in the gaps in this infamous story. Comment down below on your thoughts on James Webb and disappearance of dinosaurs.